Hemos hablado con Odette Galor sobre el viaje de la humanidad. Uno de los pensadores y economistas más relevantes de los últimos tiempos, por su originalidad y ambición, nos presenta una perspectiva inédita de la historia humana con las claves de nuestro progreso. So what we've seen the, in the past few decades is a process in which uh, there is certain convergence in institutions and cultural traits that are growth enhancing across societies. We see the technology that can mitigate adverse consequences of the disease environment is flowing from the north to the south and as a result of it is mitigating the adverse effect of geography. But one element that remains relatively stationary is the degree of diversity across societies. So despite the migration that we see in the post-1500 period, it is quite apparent that the attachment of individuals to their parental homeland and uh, current restrictions on international migration are keeping the degree of diversity across the globe relatively stable in the past decades and even in the past few centuries. So this suggests to us that uh, in fact uh, certain events that occurred in the distant past are still lingering today. Does it imply that in fact the fate of nation was determined at the time of the dispersal of anatomically modern human from Africa 60 to 90,000 years ago? Not at all. In fact, what the research suggests to us is that policy can be used to mitigate these effects. So if we think about contemporary policies of, say, the World Bank, in which uh, there is an attempt to suggest to less developed societies or developing societies to um, invest in education, invest in fertility decline, adopt technologies, open uh, markets to flow of goods and uh, services and capital. This by itself is insufficient in the sense that it's not about education policy that is simply going to elevate the level of education of all societies at once. It is about the curriculum that should be implemented in different societies. So if we focus on societies that are relatively homogeneous, for instance the Bolivian society, that is in our sample, is the most homogeneous society in the world. In a very homogeneous society, the curriculum should be such that education should be geared towards pluralism, towards thinking outside of the box, towards the creation of cultural diversity that is missing at the moment so as to permit those societies to benefit from cross-fertilization of ideas. If we take the other extreme, if we take Ethiopia, which in the sample is the most diverse society in the world, then in a society like Ethiopia, in order to benefit from the diversity without suffering the adverse consequences of social non-cohesiveness and civil conflicts, the education should be geared towards respect for others, respect for ethnic groups, and social cohesiveness. But the idea will be to use education as a vehicle to reduce the cost of diversity by, as I said, fostering tolerance, foster appreciation for different individuals and different ethnic groups. And at the same time, in those societies that are currently perhaps overly homogeneous, trying to generate what is missing in terms of cultural fluidity and cultural heterogeneity by educating individuals to challenge the status quo, to think out of the box, to, to foster cultural diversity. Mm -hmm.